This week, Alex is in Hammersmith, West London, helping an award-winning Indian restaurant which has been struggling to find the right head chef for over six months. It's been incredibly difficult. I've tried, you know, word of mouth, uh, adverts in job center, but I have not found somebody. The search still continues. Potley is owned and run by Chef Jay and his business partner, Atam. That's the trio of chicken tikka. The college friends have invested everything into a dream to bring authentic Indian cuisine to the masses. My first love is spice. Second love is obviously my missus. <laughs> the, the, don't spin that. <laughs> In the three and a half years we have opened, the restaurant is getting more and more popular, which is a great feeling. So something that we are doing is right. All ready for your main course, please? We are changing the perception of Indian food and we need a chef who is aspiring, who is passionate, who would help us to spread a bit of spice in everyone's life. They now want to grow the business, but without the right head chef, future plans could crumble. If we don't find the right head chef soon, it's a regressive step. I'm pretty much stuck in the kitchen on a day-to-day -day basis, which is what uh, we want to move away from. Alex's help at this juncture is absolutely crucial. This is a specialist role, not serving Indian fine dining, nor are they doing the kind of takeaway curry house that is so prevalent in this country. They are trying to find a very difficult middle road, which is authentic Indian market food. After advertising the post of head chef, nine applicants have been shortlisted. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Over the course of the week, they will all be interviewed on their chef skills. I've never done this before. And their character. I've been told I can talk too much, so uh, I use that skill and talk too much. Three chefs will be picked to go through to a final interview at the end of the week. Mm. Where one will be offered the job. That's one of the best mooli I've ever tried. It's day one, and our first three hopefuls are about to go under Alex, Jay, and Uttam's watchful eye. So, why do you think it's so hard to find the chef of your dreams? It's a classic case of demand and supply, where, you know, the opportunity for uh, the restaurants have uh, grown and the, in, the input of chefs from India has dried up. And also, the skill element is very important. We are just not another Indian restaurant or another curry house. So he has to have the knowledge of spices, he got to know the authentic cooking methods, and he has to deliver uh, you know, on a daily basis. That's what uh, we are looking for, and incredibly difficult so far. There's at least 10,000 Indian restaurants across the UK, which seems an extraordinary number. Yeah. Do you think that those head chefs have anglicised their food according to what they believe to be the palate of the customers they're serving? This industry is here for a big change. Yes. Huge change because people are well-travelled now, people are knowledgeable now, people are, you know, the internet, the TVs are giving them more example of what real Indian food is. So people are looking out for Indian food. It is not about choosing who makes the best chicken madras this restaurant or that restaurant is about what are they popular for and what is this restaurant popular for. That is what Indian cuisine is moving towards. And, and my request to all my fellow restauranters across the country is embrace the changes. That all said, my goodness, what a rousing, <laughs> what a rousing start to the day. I like it. Um, having said all that, we have three candidates. Hopefully one of them may be ideal for you for this position of head chef. First of all, we have Saurabh Prabhakar from London. Mm -hmm. It's an early start for our three chefs. First to arrive is Saurabh. This is something which I've been dreaming of, running my own restaurant, having my name on the menu. This gives me that perfect opportunity. Surab's been cooking professionally for 11 years and is currently working as a sous chef for a top hotel chain. He's looking for a platform to take Indian cuisine to a fine dining level. His CV excited me the most. Did it? Because Did it? Uh, he has trained in probably one of the best uh, culinary school in, in Asia. I exactly know what kind of grounding and what kind of knowledge base he possessed. The reason I'm applying for this job is that I have so many ideas. I can showcase my talent, my skills, the experiences that I've gained with so many chefs around the world. 
what bothers me is around last eight or nine years, yes. he's been in um, cruise liners, he's yes. been into hotels, and nowhere it has mentioned that he has ever cooked Indian food in the last eight odd years. Then our second candidate is Sky Sebastian Carigier from Truro in Cornwall. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited. I can't wait. I just want to get in that kitchen cooking and, uh, and being back in my old manor. Sky has 23 years of experience in the kitchen, including two years living and cooking in India. Hey. How are you? Sky. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good luck for today. Yeah. You too. Uh, his CV confounds me. Yes. I, I must say, I have so, more questions than answers. He's got a kind of stellar CV, but one that's slightly too um, full of name dropping for my liking and short on detail. And his photograph looks more like a rock star. After growing up in a hippie commune in nearby Notting Hill, Skye would like to relocate back to the area, and this could be his chance. He has been to India, so he has got some love affair with India. And whether that love affair translates into food is something that we will wait and see today. I'm going to take them on my journey through India and show them my favourite dishes. If they offered me the position, I would be elated. It would mean everything to me. You worked in the Indian kitchen before. You don't look, don't look like an Indian man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Indian from the waist down. You just can't see because of the apron. Finally, we've got our third candidate, who is Sundeep Bhagat. Indian-born Sundeep currently works as a head chef in an award-winning Indian restaurant in Ireland. I'm very determined to get this job for uh, the simple reason that I would like to move back into the London market. He would love to bring authentic Indian cuisine to the streets of London. With Sundeep, eh... He has got loads of experience, mm. but the only thing is, if you see, he is dipped in and out of the countries. Hi there. Hi. Sandeep. Nice to meet you, Sandeep. Nice to see you. Good yeah. luck for today. Hi. Sandeep. Stay. Hey, Sandeep. Nice to see you, man. Nice to meet you. Sandeep's wife and children live in India, and he plans to move them to the capital if he gets the job. Nice and fresh. Wow. <laughs> My family would be elated. They would definitely be thrilled to be living in this area. He has worked for very good restaurants in India, and he has worked with, um, you know, one of my favorite restaurants. So, in terms of the CV, he's the one who's exciting me the most. Obviously, the proof is in the food. Let's see. Um, let's go and meet the chefs. Let's go there. The candidates will be cross-examined on their cooking and costing skills, undergo a face-to-face -face interview, and prepare a signature dish. I've been cooking for 25 years. So, how this career change? Oh, I think uh, both of them have got potential. One has worked in an Indian kitchen for a while and one claims that he's travelled a lot. I'm a little bit nervous um, that I'm, I'm the only European here. Guys, if you're using this, don't throw these, huh? I'll use it. I love the hearts. It's the best bit. Uh, they're mine. Yeah. Mine. Yeah. <laughs> they are very experienced. Definitely up against very strong contenders. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there. These are Jay and Utam, who um, own and run this establishment. Today, the challenge that you guys have is to cook a very traditional dish, which is the patrani machi. Patra means leaf, so our, our fish usually is wrapped up in a banana leaf with a marination of spices. It's up to you which fish you choose. It's up to you which spices you use to flavor that fish. Please remember that you're applying for a head chef position. Please don't never forget that. And good luck, happy cooking. Thank All you. the best. Let's get it on. Let's check how fresh this is. The chefs have just one hour to cook a Petrani Machi. To make this traditional dish, they will need to pick a fish, prepare, wrap, and cook it in banana leaves. I've not made this dish before, but I know what it is because I know my roots and uh, I'm, I'm going to give it uh, some sort of twist with the vegetables and potatoes involved. I'm really confident, actually. I'm not very familiar with the specific dish that he's asking for. It's a brilliant fish to work with, mackerel, so I'm sure I won't have any problems with it. 
Well, uh, I have the basic uh, fish marination in mind. And uh, besides that, uh, as, as I go along, as I sort of like, you know, the mind will tell me what to do. I mean, I don't have really anything in mind. Which fish the chefs use will give Jay an insight into how much they understand the subtleties of spicing. Right, so we've given them quite a wide choice of fish here. Yes. What would have been the fish that you'd hope they'd choose? It's very important to understand Indian cuisine and the fish as an integral part. And India has a huge coastline. So we pair fishes with the spices. So I would really hope they go for uh, something uh, like a white fish, like a sea bass or a tilapia. And what spices would you put with them? Uh, typically for uh, these fishes, I will use more subtler spices, things like your fennel, things like your mustard, and a lot of fresh herbs, because white fish in India, we use a lot of fresh herbs. Is there any fish that really doesn't fit with cooking this kind of dish with spices? I would tend to avoid using oily fishes like mackerel, which is, has got more stronger of, uh, smell. What I would tend to use it more of is red chilies, vinegar, black peppercorn, cloves. That kind of spices mm. would go along with probably salmon or mackerel. I've chosen sea bass because it's got more subtle flavours. I think the spiciness from the ginger, from the garlic, from the uh, coriander, mint, the fish takes a, absorbs a lot of flavour from those ingredients it, and enhances the flavour of the fish. The fish that I've gone for is mackerel, simply because it's quite an oily fish. It's going to hold its flavour. It's also going to hold its texture. Um, and I think you're going to get better marinade out of it. I've chosen a snapper here because it mingles easily with Indian spices and it's good for baking. And uh, the best part of fish is it should be fresh and it, this was very, very fresh. Not as fresh as my mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> to see if the chefs can also create a profitable dish, they will need to take the price of the fish portion into consideration. We've asked them to produce a dish for £24, pounds, That's right, yeah. which means that you are looking for a raw fish cost of what? Approximately the raw fish cost would be somewhere around, say, five and a half, six pounds. Fine. Because there are portions of carb and portions of veg also in, into that uh, particular dish, so they produce a complete meal. With the prep well underway, Alex and Jay check on the chef's progress, starting with sous chef Saurabh. For him, gaining the head chef position would be a lifetime achievement. My current job, I'm the number two in my kitchen, which is one of the best hotels in London to work for. To see Portly grow into a restaurant is a dream, and I would really like to fulfill that dream. Hi, Zora. Hi, Alex. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Tell us what fish you chose. I've chosen sea bass. It's the only fish which is reasonable in price, uh, sustainable, and uh, the best thing about it, it absorbs a lot of flavour. With Indian cookery, it's important that all the masalas, all the spices, they permeate the fish. And uh, the spices which I've chosen, they are light, they are fresh, and I want the fish to absorb the maximum flavours of the masala, the yeah. marination that I've done. And is this what you think or consider is correct for a portion that's selling for £24? I think uh, it's one portion that we are yes. uh, doing, and per portion, the, when you see the plate, it's going to be a full nutritional balance of proteins, carbs and uh, starch. So you're making a complete meal with your starch, your portion proteins. of veg and your exactly. protein, yeah? Brilliant. Okay. Okay, Fantastic. Sure. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Zorab has chosen sea bass correctly. That's right. And his portion looked rather small. Rather small for the price point that we are looking at. That's yes. correct, yes. And also his marination was just a light smearing. So during the cooking process, if we lose quite a bit of a marination, the, each mouthfeel will not be as exciting as I would expect from a Patrani Machi. For me, shying away from using a lot of spices and a lot of marination is a no-go for Indian cooking. Skye's hoping his colourful background will be to his advantage. My first food memories would be in the commune there was lots of people arriving and been traveling in India or abroad and bringing new ingredients and the kitchen was really the hub of the commune. I'm confident in my cooking abilities. I feel a little bit nervous because I want the job that badly. 
he's picked an oily fish, something Jay didn't recommend. What have you chosen? Right, I've gone for mackerel. Um, it's perfectly in season, it's sustainable. It's a very cheap fish. It's an oily fish, which I think will go very well with the flavours, with the citric flavours and the coconut. Um, also, it's going to hit the price mark. I'm going to make up my paste, which is with coriander, ginger, lime, lime zest, uh, green chilli and seasoning and garlic. Sky, I think there's too much going on, but it has to really hit the note right with your, all these spice combinations. Because in India, what we typically do is that, you know, we want to expl explore and enjoy these sort of fresh fish. Yeah. So we've got to make sure that, Let you know, spice... speak for itself. Okay, yes. Your face was a picture when he went through the list of spices. Do oh. tell, Tam, what, what he's putting in. Uh, what the Sky has done is that mm. he has got a whole list of ingredients. I am really not sure that, you know, whether he will be able to get the blend right which will then complement the fish rather than sort of overpowering mackerel. The kind of people he has worked with, I was expecting more of, you know, a little more sensible use of spices in, in those dishes. Maybe it'll blow us away. It'll give us a whole yes. new dining experience right. and, and we'll be pleasantly surprised. My style of cooking is very rustic, basic, nothing complicated. The kind of spices which I use, which are not uh, really very popular in um, the English market. So when people do uh, step into that kind of a flavor, uh, it's incredible. For his Petrani Machi, Sundeep has picked what he thinks is snapper. Sundeep. Okay. How are you doing? Oh. What have you chosen? I have chosen snapper and I'm uh, getting into uh, the west coast of India. And, um, Can I just say, agents. not to wrong foot you, but that's tilapia. This is I... not red snapper, chef. Okay. <laughs> tilapia, which is a Nile fish. Yes, so tilapia is tilapia. Okay, that's it. <laughs> okay, so just so you know what you're cooking. Yep. So, I mean, before you cook, if you want to tweak your recipe to make sure that, you know, the tilapia lends and takes this kind of harsh flavours, just, yes, just, to, just to think about it, yeah? And what are you going to put with it? I'm going to do a salsa, mango salsa with it. Lovely. And uh, okay. maybe some uh, chickpeas as a carbohydrate substitute. Okay. Sandeep is using what he thought <laughs> was snapper. I pointed out to him that it was tilapia, mm -hmm. um, which didn't seem to faze him at all, did it? He just said, oh, it's a fish. So, I mean, whether it's tilapia or a snapper, how does it matter? I mean, for a chef who has worked for 20 years, to have that attitude, mind-blowing. So let's hope that he's going to be coming with a dish as well, which is going to be blowing us, but not knowing which fish he is cooking, That's not bad. acceptable. We've only got eight minutes left yet. Eight minutes more? I think I need a few more minutes than eight. Has anyone got a spare half? Hurry up, hurry up. Is there is a fryer still on in the corner? That's it. <laughs> I'm through. Thank you. Sorab hasn't cooked his fish the authentic way, using banana leaves. Instead, he has chosen to pan-fry his sea bass with a lime and chilli marinade. Accompanying it are cumin-tossed potatoes, garlic spinach and a lentil and pistachio sauce. The combined cost of the dish is £7, so Sorab hits the one-third of the £24 selling price before VAT. Did you cook this uh, fish in banana leaf? No, I did not. You didn't? Okay. The marination really didn't seep in. That's the concept of having sea bass, which has more open texture. But with every mouthful, I'm not getting that marination. It probably was a light dab. Potato is nice and well seasoned, crisp, 
wilted spinach again spot on it it hits the spot right away this is a good dish this is not a dish that i would call you know an indian dish you have held yourself back and that's that's i i, I didn't want to see that no i have not held myself back because i want to put this concept that it needs to be fine dining food and okay. our philosophy is no we're close to fine dining sort of and it is no no we're close to fine dining and that's what i want to bring to pour from that uh, portly can be fine dining okay should we go on to the next dish yes Sky's banana wrapped mackerel is accompanied with sauteed potatoes, kale, and green beans. The combined cost of his ingredients is around the two pounds fifty mark, making his dish the most profitable. I think the presentation looks good. The, on the bed of nice green seasonal vegetables with a portion of carb, he's got a, a nice chunky piece of fish. But Sky, I think the choice of fish that you had was probably wrong. Okay. When you rattled out the ingredient list, I thought you know the flavors would really come through. It's 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 very subdued. I very much enjoyed the paste that was underneath. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And I quite enjoyed your sauce on the bed and the vegetable that went with that a lot. Thank you. Costing the veg would probably amount to a maximum of pound. The rest of the ingredients are not much more than fifty pence, mm -hmm. and the fish is mackerel. It's cheap as chips at this time of year. So in total, maybe two pounds fifty. What sort of uh, RSP would you sell this at? I, I always go uh, three times to, to break even, four times to be happy, and five times to be rich. Okay. <laughs> good line. Very good one. Okay. Sundeep has paired his banana wrapped tilapia, marinated in lemon and chilies, with pan seared vegetables, chickpeas, pomegranate, and a mango relish. With an ingredients cost of just over three pounds, his dish also hits the margins. Based on the presentation that you have got here, I would probably rate two out of ten. There's no synchronization in terms of your components. Uh, everything is just sort of lumped up on each other. So I very much enjoyed your vegetables and I very much enjoyed your mango salsa. Component-wise, yes, your chickpea has that sort of tangy back note. It, it does deliver with the fish, but that, that's where I think uh, your understanding about the patrani machi is a bit wrong. The traditional recipe for patrani machi, anyway, you look out for, would never have a konkani spice in it. Though it is not the kind of patrani fish that we were expecting it to be, I loved your fish. It's full of flavors. That's so you have not shied away. Your chickpea is brilliant. I think mm, I think delicious. that stood out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. The first part of the interview is over, but the chefs still have a lot to prove. Excited this morning. I'm we had some seaweed. really good candidates. We were very clear. Please give us a dish that you could put on this establishment's menu for £24. I have a vision for this restaurant, and the concept is very clear for me. It's fine dining food, serving in a good restaurant, great atmosphere. And he's got a completely different perception about what this job is all about. His whole plate was the furthest away what Portly's everyday food is all about. The sauce brings all the flavors together. It marries it. It yeah. marries it well. Yeah. Sky. I mean, uh, the standout thing on all those dishes for me was the paste at the bottom of Sky's mackerel. Yeah. I love that. Exactly the ingredients that I'm looking for uh, for a patrani machi. Uh, only thing is that his choice of fish was wrong, and his flavors didn't come through. I disagree with the, it being the wrong fish to marinate because with, with marination. It tends to drop a lot of its natural liquids, and if it's not an oily enough fish, you end up with a dry fish. Mm. So I disagree with what he said on that one. Sorry, I'm getting bones on your fish, Sandeep. You yeah, do a lot of bones. Sandeep's dish, um, I have to say, I loved everything apart from the fish. I'm, I was personally happy because he, he didn't shy away from using spices. That's what our philosophy here is. It's clear that we're expecting a lot more than we've seen so far yes. from these three <laughs> candidates. I mean, given the CVs, we expected a different level today, and uh, it hasn't been apparent yet. Right. So, um, 
a lot is riding on this next round. Our three chefs have a long way to go if they are to convince their potential employers that they are head chef material. The process of getting a head chef is very difficult. The process of getting a very good head chef is impossible. I think where we are at this point in the proceedings is feeling a little deflated. This morning, none of them quite performed up to standard. I hope that at some point <laughs> during this next stage that we'll be able to have faith in at least one of these chefs. Can they win over Jay Uttam and Alex in their formal interview? Bismillah, guys. Good luck, man. Man. Hey, Good afternoon. Good afternoon, chef. Good afternoon, With a background in fine dining, Saurabh needs to convince Jay and Utam that he can adapt to the restaurant's philosophy. So what made you apply for Portley's headship position? Because now I think it's the right time for me to pitch into the market where I can stamp my name on the menu. Do, do you understand as in fine dining and market-style food are two poles apart? Of course, I understand your point of view. Street food, is very rustic, but you need to understand that if you, if I become the head chef, a person who can cook fine dining food can easily cook rustic food. For me, it will be very easy to change gears. Do you consider yourself to be adaptable? Because I think it's very important that you understand that the philosophy here is not, no one expects to change it. I'm adaptable to that, but if I come, I will come with certain hopes and expectations from you as way you will have expectations from me. And what and are those, sure, Saurabh? What are those? Old expectations would be to have my name on the menu. Saurabh, the fact is, we, we do not want a head chef to be a yes men sort of a person. We want people who are better than us to run our business. However, my focus never goes out from my customers. And I don't want someone to come and say that I'm going to be creating a menu which might completely be counterproductive to our own business. Chopping and cutting off menus is always a challenge which every chef loves. You would which love. Which we do periodically and, ourselves. And that's exactly what I want, that right. all of us sit down every three months, six months, and sit down, okay, these dishes have worked and these dishes have not worked. How do we change? what the guest feedback was for over the last three or six months, what was the feedback, and how can we take that further? Thank, Thank you. you All the best. Much. Thank Thanks. you, Saurabh. Thank you, guys. I think uh, it worked in my favor because I was able to explain what I'm really all about, and I hope they respect my experience, my skills, and my creativity. Good, good, good. All good. Good Great. luck to you guys. Yeah. It's a good challenge. I think I explained myself well, what I really want, what are my expectations from this place. Yeah. And uh, it's up to them now. I think he has the skill set. I mean, it, he has refined it in a different way. Mm -hmm. I think it shows an immense arrogance to come in and say, you know, basically, I want to do things the way that I want to do them or I'm not interested. In this restaurant, even my name is not there on the menu. I agree. So having a chef with his name on the menu is totally contrary to our philosophy. Do well, huh? Thanks, Thanks man. Cheers. Bless you. Sky's experience living and working in India is where his passion for this cuisine originates from. But his CV raises hey. lots of questions. Come and sit down. Hi, Sky. Hi, Sky. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Nice day. So, Sky. Yes. Just wanted to ask you. I mean, you have worked with some of the biggest names uh, in the industry. Yeah. And you have been pretty much like a rolling stone. I mean, you have never been stable at one place for more than two years. No, I worked in the Marco Group for five years. I also worked for. Which William years was Pou that? Uh... William Pouget for four years. So, 19, I so for 1994 four. to 1999. It's not, it's is not it? On the it, CV. it wasn't on the CV, darling. Oh, wasn't it on the? No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Sorry about that. No, no, it's fine. It's just that that's all we've got to go yeah, on. So right, obviously, obviously yeah. it's a very interesting CV. It's, uh, it's eclectic. You've got successful catering experience, one to 10,000 people. Yeah. One person is a, is a supper. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so who did you, who have you cooked supper for? The Queen, I see. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, very Lara Bengal, Kate Moss. Where and what did you cook for the Queen? 
<laughs> yeah, good one. What did she like? I can't actually remember what we did. It was pretty straightforward. Was it lots like, of people? Like fish course and soup and all that jazz. Have you benefited out of your time in India? Amazingly. I found my smile again. Okay, that, yeah. that's what we want. Uh, but the only exp experience in Indian cuisine that you have is probably your food travel in India. So yeah. convince us that you, know, you are the right candidate for the job. Anyone can walk into a kitchen, pick up a knife and start prepping. Um, I think it's about integrating what I have to offer from a business acumen as far as using tandoor ovens mm -hmm. and things like that, I'm really excited to learn and for someone to show me. So I think really it's just shifting what I know already. Yeah. Do you think that you could quickly pick up the kind of spicing skills that are so essential to this job? Um, I would absolutely put my 120% of my effort into doing that. Last question. If you have to sell yourself as a head chef, what are the three good reasons According to you, we should hire you. Um, enthusiasm, business acumen, and flair, flair and imagination. <laughs> That's full. I know. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but you snuck it in anyway. It's yeah. right. Thank you, Sky. Good luck, darling. Thank Thanks. You. Bye. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Uh, the interview went great. Um, I think at the end of the day, what am I stood in? A kitchen. What have I worked in for the last 24 years? Kitchens. It's really just transferring those skills. I don't want to fall in love yet, otherwise I might get my heart broken. Happy cooking? Yeah, man. He had some great answers. He had some very good answers. And, and he was... You know, that's what I like about a person who was not born and brought up in India going back and finding, because that's a love and passion. That's something that really strikes about Sky. I think till date, uh, of all the candidates, he came across as one who is positive, enthusiastic, and his travel in India has really inspired him, I think. OK, guys, I'll join you. Good luck, Sundeep. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Last up, family man Sundeep. His first dish may have been disappointing, but he has worked at one of Uttam's favourite Indian Sorry. restaurants in Brighton, Please, as well as many other kitchens in the UK and India. One thing that stands out in your CV is your association with chili pickle. How was it like? It was very nice. I worked with a fantastic chef, incredible knowledge, and I learned a lot about it. Did you enjoy working there? Oh, yes, of course. The reason why we are interested with that, because their concept is, to, to an extent, quite similar to our concept. And why did it last only three or four months? Uh, six months. Uh, it last, months, lasted okay. because uh, I had some personal issues back home. Mm -hmm. So I had to attend to my mother's uh, uh, medical needs. So you had to leave the job and yes, go back I, to India? Yes, I had to leave. And we were I, wondering why you went back to India. May I ask, you've, you've gone backwards and forward an awful lot. For example, uh, 93 to 96 at International Airport, New Delhi. And then you were in London from then 96 to 2006. And then you went back to New Delhi for a year. And then you were back in the UK for two years. And then you were in New Delhi for a, a year again. Yes, all this is happening at the time when uh, my children are being born. If I have a stable job in London, and uh, in two years' time, my family moves back, in two years' time, you're planning to get your family here, right? What happens from now until two years? I, unless you saw something, um, something unforeseen does happen, uh, but my mom is there, so I intend to sort of like finally settle and bring her over. I'm being very honest with you, so... I yeah, really appreciate that. We, we, if, if required, I or my wife may have to sort of like go and attend to her needs. Yeah. You seem like a very nice, a very laid back person. Uh, but I don't know how, you don't seem like a particularly forceful. Can I, can I just add a little bit more to what Alex is asking? If I have to close my eyes and imagine you in our kitchen, what sort of personality are you? Very easy going, humorous. I think one of the greatest challenges is to retain staff. And the best way you can do it is from your nature. 
it's the passion with what you cook. You have that tremendous knowledge. You don't have to be stressed at work. I mean, uh, why should one be stressed at work? Thank Pleasure. you very Thank much. You. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I've written, I like this one. <laughs> I like him. He, he is a safe pair of hands, definitely. But would he be able to inject that passion, that vigor into the team? Would he be able to take it to the next level? I think um, the interview went out fine because they appreciate my ideas of uh, running a kitchen. Oh, God, there's, this, this whole interview process has thrown up more questions than it's answered. Absolutely, it's not made our life a bit any easier. So <sighs> it all boils down to what they produce on that plate, which is their signature dish. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. We've asked you to pre-prepare a signature dish, something that fits in with the philosophy here. This is their final chance to shine. We have done something here which has made this place successful. Always keep that in mind. Chefs, it would be important for you to understand that uh, our restaurant's philosophy and cook accordingly. To test their budgetary skills, costings will also be required, as well as a recommended menu price. Their final dish should prove they have the qualities needed to cook a profitable, standout dish that showcases their culinary flair. I've got this cannon of lamb here, which I have just rolled with some fennel powder, some ca whole cardamom, some salt, and a bit of uh, clarified butter. Saurabh's fine dining ambitions came under fire. Will he adapt his dish to fit Jay and Uttam's dining ethos? So tell us, what's your dish? Uh, I'm presenting Kashmir to you on a platter. Basically, I'm doing a cannon of lamb and gushtaba sauce. And why did you particularly select this dish? Eh? Because it brings a lot of skill on a plate. What I am trying to showcase here is keeping in philosophy. It's got components which are available on the streets of Kashmir. Okay, and you're confident about your costings? It's a bit on higher side, yeah. but I'm sure uh, once you see the plate, it will be worthy of the cost. Fine, brave move, thank, thank you. you. I think it's a winning dish because this dish has a lot of components which require a lot of art and skill and a lot of creativity and uh, me cooking them would actually showcase what my skills and where do I stand. Alex, just look at his ingredient uh, that he has got. He has got English lamb cannon, he has got the rib, he has got the saffron, he has got yeah. the lotus stem. Lotus. It's about decadence, it's about opulence, it's about extravagance. And I think it's... It certainly it's, sounds yeah. that. He's under no illusions. He knows that that's a very expensive dish. He knows that this is a dish that wouldn't necessarily go on the menu. But what's encouraging is he's giving us a correct selling price of £34.11. But he's also given us various options, which shows an ability with figures that I find has been sadly lacking in many candidates. Sky stood out in his interview. He now needs to showcase his cooking abilities. His signature dish is a bold move, a complex vegetarian tali. How are you getting on? Good. Um, we've got a lot of elements in the tali, so um, there's quite a bit to put together. Yeah. Um, but it's coming along well. I just counted out your ingredients. You have got about 59 ingredients in this tali. Are you able to manage all those ingredients and put it to good use? We shall see. All of the ingredients you've got on your menu already. So I made sure that it was consistent with what you carried in stock already. OK, brilliant. That's Very good well preparation, thought. darling. And your costing? Pennies. Pennies. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's a vegetarian list. dish, yeah. so I've got no expensive meat on there. OK, brilliant. Really looking forward to it. Right. Thank you. Very interesting dish. All the little bits and special bits that come with it are my favourite bits from my journey across India. So that's what my signature dish is, is my journey through India on a plate. What I like about his uh, dish, uh, he has dared to create something very authentic, which has not been the case with the other two n uh, chefs who haven't had an Indian background. Yes. So he's dared something different. I don't understand. He said his food cost was pennies, but I have £13.82 here. 
But as a total cost, uh, I think there's something wrong. There's something yeah. wrong. I, I think I think he has made the selling price and the cost price. There is a there is a difference between the two. Let's see. Do you really think that it's a pound for a raw, raw, raw coconut, coconut, coconut butter, butter for no. 50 grams? That's no. what I'm saying. He has got no clue about costing. Sandeep's commitment to the job in hand was questioned. Can his food now do the talking? So. Sunday, tell us, what are you making for us and why? I'm, I'm just sort of, like, I'm, I'm making a fish curry with the kodam puli, which is smoked tamarind. And the vegetables, I just want to toss it with the with this spice uh, called jakia. The best thing about this spice is when you bite into it, it doesn't lose its crunch even after cooking. Uh, Chef Sandeep, we could not find jakia anywhere, so I had to dig into my store covered <laughs> ingredient and I got it from my home. I don't use Thank jakia. You. <laughs> I, I was really pleased to see somebody going to that extent using a spice which is hardly being used and it's very underrated. Mm -hmm. It's a mix uh, between your cumin and kalonji, which is the black onion seeds. So it has got a characteristic nutty flavor to it and it is found in a state in the foothills of Himalayas and people there use it on a daily basis. It is one of the, my favorite spice and I'm extremely pleased that it's on the menu today. Good. We're really looking forward to it. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. All the best. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. The message which is going to be communicated through what I'm cooking is uh, keep your costs low, introduce to the market new spices and uh, use the professionalism of a good head chef. His cost is um, about £3.40 which allows you a dish price of 16.35. So actually his dish sits very well on your menu very at true. that price point. Agreed. Um, what do you think about what he's chosen to cook? I think he has, he has chosen to cook uh, again a very typical sort of South Indian dish with North Indian vegetables. So again, a regional Indian food coming into play, which is what we expect of a head chef. Good, okay. fantastic. <laughs> I just have to finish everything, bring everything together, and um, I'm ready to go. Sweet, hot, sour, it's a nice chutney. The sauce ready, my vegetables are ready, and my kedgeri is ready there. So um, all I need to do is sort of like cook the fish. Everything has gone to plan so far. If they have a good palate, they will like it. Nearly there. The plate's gonna look wonderful. Oh wow, look at that. That's beautiful, chef. First to serve is Saurabh. Hi. Thank you so much, Saurabh. Saurabh has prepared a cannon of lamb with a gushtaba sauce and tabak mass served with lotus root, saffron potato piles, and a mint and walnut pesto. His ingredients cost £9.76, with overheads, VAT, and profit taken into account, it comes to a higher than average menu price of just over £34. Well, that is really a thing of beauty. Thank you. Would you not agree? I think it's a piece of art on a plate, lots of colours going on, perfect uh, visual presentation. What a delicious dish. I think, yeah, I, see, I would agree. I think you've got all the components there, the subtlety in the, in the flavor, execution is perfect. I thought the sauce could have been seasoned a bit more because you, you have all those subtle flavors with the sauce. We can only congratulate you because you're the first one to give us what uh, GP we're going to get. Yes, all the different scenarios, the, the margins, and also the price with VAT, without VAT. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. My fear about his ambition to become a fine dining chef is only getting bigger. <laughs> How did it go, man? How was it? 
Good? Uh, yeah, it went down really well. All of them liked it and uh, I knew it's gonna come out nice. The moment lamb came out, I knew the whole dish will come out nice. Yes, lamb is fantastic. Well, that's the way it should be. I think as the day progressed, I think he has toned down a bit. So it's all about can we nurture him, can we sort of train him to sort of mold into sort of Portly's uh, way of working. I think it went really well. Yeah, it's a winning dish. Next to plate is Sky. Everything's coming together, yeah. I'm really happy with it. Um, it's going to need a little bit more of this sauce. This is the tucky chat. Unfortunately, the potato baskets haven't quite come out as I would have liked. Is that the famous lentil? Huh? Is that the lentils? Yeah. Come on, man, push on. Don't give up now. Boom, boom, boom. Have I missed anything? I don't think I have. All right. All right, ready. It's like a garden. That's it, man. Yeah. Moment of truth. Hey. The proof's in the pudding. <laughs> well done, sir. Thanks, sir. I think he overdid it. It was too much on a plate. I think he need to cut down somewhere. Hi. Hi, guys. Thank you. Hello. So okay. all those ingredients are here? Yeah. Thank you very much. Sky's Ayurvedic Thali consists of a sambar and a mutter paneer. Served with various accompaniments, including steamed wild rice, pomegranate raita, a roti, and torkri chat with mango chutney. He's incorrectly costed his ingredients at just under 14 pounds, which would put his entire tali on the menu at a price of 56 pounds. What do you think about the presentation? I, I personally feel that he is, is, is a lot about what the concept of portly is. Loads of color, loads of different things happening. You know, there is no uniformity. In terms of presentation, very good. Thank you. Me too. I like it. Your pea crush yeah. is perfect. It's seasoned well, delicious, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Your seeds, well done. With the sort of salad, as you said, and I tried it. Something I have not experienced, it's out of the world. But two things that lets you down is your rice. Your rice is undercooked. Okay. You wanted to create a sort of South Indian lentil, like a sambar? Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't look anything like a sambar. It fell flat a little bit. Yeah. The papadums, I would not serve this in my restaurant no, at all. No, me neither. I, I personally feel that I can divide this entire board into half and say that half of that is fantastic. <laughs> the tokri chart with the pomegranate and yogurt yeah. and the seeds are just, it's just outstanding. So the only other question that I have for you is you said to me in the kitchen that this was going to cost pennies, but when we saw your list of ingredients, somehow it added up to 13 pounds or something. There must be a mistake there. That must be a mistake, yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Thank, oh, you right. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. Sir. It was a story of two halves. It was half a great success and half a huge disaster. Woo! Wow. How'd it go, man? They've demolished yeah, it. Right. They loved everything up until here. From there, there. They loved that. They Your loved chutney the, is they wicked. Loved the chutney. Your chutney is wicked, man. Yeah, cheers, man. They really like these seeds. Did you try these? The, yeah, they are, that's fantastic the as well. All right, they really love the seeds. That's something, that's something I've learned from you. Really yeah. fantastic yeah. stuff. He failed miserably with the rice and the chapati particularly and the, yeah. and the sambar dal. Because those were three very common dishes. To me, that plate wasn't convincing. For me, I was trying to show that if I can do a veggie dish all right, maybe they'd like to see what I could do with some meat and, uh, and get me back in the final. I think for uh, a non-Indian boy, I've done okay. Last to present his dish is Sundeep. I said, wow, that looks amazing, man. Are you happy with it? Oh, of course. I'm 
happy. If not, I can't do much about it. <laughs> anyway, Thank you. see you around. What do you think? Did you like it? Sorry? Did you like his dish? I haven't tasted all the elements together yet. Do you think it looked nice? Let's have a go. I think, I think it looked a little bit, um, kind of, you know, mid-90s uh, gourmet. Hello. Thank you. Hi there. Thank you. Thank you. Sundeep's dish is Kodampuli fish curry with jackia vegetables and kedgeri. His ingredients cost £3.40, allowing for a menu price of just over £16. Of the three chefs, this is the most realistically budgeted dish. I'm going straight for vegetables. Yeah. Sauce very much. Comments? I think um, I, the dish delivers mm. what it says. Like you know, very simple dish. It's not over complicated with too many components around, with too many spices around. The sauce is exactly what I would expect from a sort of a Kerelin sauce. It perfectly complements correct choice of fish. I mean, see, see, sea bass really has taken that flavor very well. And the best part about that dish, which I feel is that, you know, use of this unique spices. A customer would ask us, what is this spice? Where do you get it? You know, that engagement uh, gets away straight away. So, I mean, yeah, I can happily pay to eat this dish any day. I mean, uh, uh, Hats off to you, sir. It is healthy, yet it is yummy. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I love that dish. I really enjoyed it. Hey, how you go, man? I'm happy they liked it. Oh, okay, man. cool. And they liked it because uh, lots of vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> His dish was well thought. Very simple, traditional spices, you know, things like jakhia, kodumpuli. We use all those kind of spices. So, you know, he has put that to good use. That was brilliant, as in, I think it was outstanding. Jay and Uttam must now decide who they want to see again for the final interview at the end of the week. For the chefs, it's a waiting game. Jay, Uttam and I had high hopes for today, and um, we thought we might have our eventual winner in this round of heats. But actually, every single one of those chefs, there's a big cloud of unknowing that should have been dispelled by now. All of them have their strengths and weaknesses to a certain degree. Mm. But combined together, can I see one of those chefs working in my kitchen? So what do we do here? There's a big question mark. Chefs, thank you so much for today. As I'm sure you're aware, the decision isn't mine to make, thank goodness. <laughs> the decision is Jay and Otam's, and so I'm going to hand over to them. Chefs, I think uh, we got to look at all the elements that you would bring to the table in terms of your skill. That's one element in terms of your experience, in terms of your knowledge, in terms of your attitude, in terms of your personality. For Sky, I think uh, you had uh, enthusiasm, you had travelled India, but unfortunately, I think you had lacked focus. With Saurav, I think uh, your level of cooking, your skill, there is no doubt about it. But are you the right fit for Portly? I, I'm not very sure. Chef Sandeep, I think your experience and your skill uh, is evident. But somehow, your convincing power as to why you want this job, it didn't come across. So, judging on all that, I think we have come to a decision. And the decision is, no one goes through the next round. Thank you very Sorry much. Sorry, guys. This is an unexpected twist in the tail, to tell you the truth. None of you really fit our bill in, 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 a, in a sort of a complete way. It's typically a business decision in terms of skill set, personality. All of you champion a particular way of cooking. 
but with all due respect, you hope you understand our position that uh, we are not taking any of you chefs to the next round forward. I respect to your decision. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, chef. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. The problem is that Jay and Tam do not feel that any of the candidates today match their expectations. When you have a certain set of expectations from the chefs and when it doesn't really add up, sometimes in business you've got to make tough decisions. My concepts, my ideas don't fit into the concepts and ideas with Jay and the place that they want to run. And uh, good luck to them finding the right head chef. I respect anyone's decision when it's their business, absolutely. I appreciate the fact that they liked my food. So I'm going back with some positivity, of course. This is a real process. They are really looking for a head chef. I, I mean, I have no intention of trying to bounce them into choosing a candidate from today that they honestly do not feel happy with. If I needed convincing, which I didn't, this is actually an incredibly valuable interview process. Spend the time now and don't waste time later should be the motto of any restaurant owner.